an officer lifted the lid to find the burned body of a young girl inside. What's good, guys? Welcome back to the Mill Carton Series. I'm your host, Stephanie, if you are new. And as always, guys, we thank you for tuning in. Today's episode will focus on 10-year-old Imani Moss. Now, Imani was starved and killed by her stepmother, Tiffany Moss, back in 2013. And as I begin to read more about this bright, beautiful little girl, it is truly sad that her father literally let this happen. Like, literally let this happen. And I say that as we will get into this case, as you will see, there were significant signs of a Tiffany being an evil woman to your child. Now, Iman Moss is the father and he married Tiffany Moss. So let's get into this story, guys, because it's a crazy one. And as always, I feel I always feel like my heart breaks into a million pieces when it comes to children because I can never understand how someone can do that to their baby. Like I look at my kid, my son is 10 and I cannot imagine doing the things that people do, doing the things that people do to their children. So Imani was born on April 23rd of 2003 in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, you're probably wondering, well, how did she live with her father? Well, it had been reported that her mother was, you know, a drug addict and going through significant changes, and she felt it was best to live with her father. And when I think of those stories, I always think of how a person is being so selfless because they know what they are doing is not always the best, but they want the very best for their child. So in 2007, Iman meets Tiffany at a church. Again, he sees her, he's thinking, okay, this woman is beautiful, but little did he know she had an evil spirit, okay? Because no one on their right mind would ever do something to a child if you're just not evil. Like, it's just pure evilness. Let's just call it for what it was. So the two became very inseparable, and after two years of dating, they decided to wed. Then literally after that, they welcome a baby boy. And this is kind of when the relationship starts to take kind of that significant turn. So in March of 2010, this is where things take that significant turn for Imani and the Moss family. So Imani tells the school nurse that she didn't want to go home because she was scared she was going to get beaten, that she was going to get beaten because of her report card. Mind you, Imani is only six years old at this time frame. And when the nurse checked her, Imani had different bruises on her. So as rightfully so, she had to call law enforcement. And that's when Iman, he goes down to the police department and finds out that pretty much Tiffany is going to be charged because she is also a teacher. And of course, you know, you cannot have any of those offender things on your record, especially as a teacher. So she's put on a five-year probation and they are set to take classes. And this is when Imani goes and lives with her grandmother. And at this time, her grandmother says how Imani is doing better. She's eating more, like more of her personality is coming out and rightfully so, because when you're in an environment where someone doesn't care for you and you're with people who love you it makes a world of a difference so in the fall of 2010 imani had to go back to her father's house they end up winning custody of some sort and her grandmother pleaded to have imani stay with her because it was apparent that imani was being abused when she got beat the first time that's sign number one Ran away, sign number two, ran away again, sign number three. I mean, how many signs do you have to have? By Tiffany. But nonetheless, Tiffany was returned back to her father. And this is where I say the system is so messed up. Like, you literally have that this woman physically abused this 10-year-old girl. This, well, this six-year-old girl at the time. And it's proof in the pudding. But you return her to her abuser's home. That makes zero sense to me as a mother. What? Tiffany kind of grew more grumpier. She would scold Imani a little bit more. She, it was like she just had this hatred for Imani. And it's like, lady, you did this. 
you abused this girl and didn't think that the school would find out. So you're upset. You lost your teaching licensure or whatever the case is, but you did this. Consequences result from actions that you did as a grown woman. So when Tiffany had her second child with Iman, Imani decides to run away. She's nine at the time. And like a nine-year-old y'all, that's how you know. That's how you know this is serious. A nine-year-old poor baby decides to run away because the woman that her dad decides to marry is abusing her. And what are you doing as the father? What are you doing? You're just allowing this woman to scold your kid in a manner that is not right. And when she ran away, she was found by a police officer like sleeping on bushes. And Tiffany and Iman get away with this, literally. I mean, of course, they probably made up tons of lies as to why Imani ran away. Well, in May of 2013, the family goes and visits Tiffany's family and they notice how thin Imani looks, how her hair is cut poorly. And they ask Tiffany, you know, like, what's going on? And she pretty much says like, well, if you act ugly, you should look ugly. Like, you are a grown ass woman treating a nine-year-old like this what does that say about you because you're not the prettiest thing walking for you to be doing someone like that so there was a lot of red flags right well a lot of people didn't want to blame Imani's father because he worked two jobs trying to provide for the family and then when he would see Imani it was kind of like he didn't pay it any mind he just thought that Imani had like a high metabolism and that there wasn't really anything that he could do but I call BS I call bullshit you know your kid and you know your wife has a history of putting her hands on your daughter and you see your daughter drastically losing weight something would come out of my you know my mental like what is going on here what is happening and even if you didn't know that she was physically abusing your child. If you, me as a mother, I would be concerned about her weight loss as a nine year old, a nine, 10 year old girl. Kids eat. My 10 year old will go in the refrigerator and eat. My six year old, almost seven year old eats, okay? Like they were home with me because they had COVID all week and I literally was like, oh my God, you kids eat so much. Like, oh goodness, you know what I'm saying? And it's. And it's okay because they're children. They have high metabolisms. But the thing about it is you know your child. You know your kid. You know when something is wrong. Like my son is more shy and timid than my daughter. My daughter is very blunt. She says what's on her mind. She's very vocal. So I know how to approach both of my children in the manners that they reciprocate their, you know, their love and their attention and, and their wants and their needs. Like you should know these things as her father. I call bullshit. I call bullshit. So in the summer of 2013, the family decides to relocate to Lawrenceville, Georgia. And this is kind of when no one really ever sees Imani again. Like it was kind of like Tiffany wanted to seclude her from her family, from, you know, the mother's side or even the, you know, the dad's side. Nonetheless, she was not really seen by other family members because you think about it. This little girl is now losing drastic weight. She has bruises. She has different things going on with her. You as an outsider, as the grandma, and the aunt, you are going to pick up on that because you know you haven't seen them in a long time. And when you see them, they're not full of life. You know, that bright energy that you once seen is no longer there. So it had been reported in one of the articles that I read that Tiffany would pretty much cook for her children and not Imani. She would lock Tiffany up in the room, pretty much starving her. And I know people say, well, some parents, some step parents won't do that. Yo, if you never had a step parent, let me tell you something here. They do that shit. They do that spiteful crap when it comes to their children versus the, the parent's child. And that's why I don't get into those conversations about step parents and all that because you know, you have to go on it on your own case by case because some people are really evil. Some people put on a persona that they're going to love your child, but I'm sorry. Some people out here do not. They do not. 
okay? It is a facade. So on October 24th of 2013, Tiffany had texted Iman to say that something was wrong with Imani. So instead of him coming like right then and when she texts him, when he returns home later that day after his shift, he sees Imani in the tub shivering, like shivering, okay? Can you imagine, the, imagine that scene? So when he sees Imani like that, he didn't know what to do. He wanted to call the emergency, you know, 911, but Tiffany talked him out of it because, of course, she's on probation. They're going to think I did it, but you did do it. You did do it. You didn't want them to find out the truth that you are a scumbag, okay? And so this is where it starts to take this ploy. So Tiffany comes up with a plan that so they won't get blamed that she ran away like she did before. Like what, lady? Seriously? And then they decide to dispose of her body because at this point, Imani is done. She is dead. She is deceased from the things that Tiffany has done to her. Her body could no longer handle handle it. So they come up with a plan to burn this girl, to AKA cremate her. They tie her up, put duct tape, and they put her in a trash can. And on a Halloween, they were gonna burn it. An officer lifted the lid to find the burned body of a young girl inside. It appears to be an apartment complex trash can, like for the recreational picnic area. And that's what uh, where the bodies are. There was not an active fire in the apartment or trash can when officers arrived, but investigators confirmed there is evidence of a fire. That's what I'm being told. Um, once the officers took the lid off the trash can, saw the body, they put the lid back on and started clearing the apartment and speaking with the male further. And so when they realized that Imani was not burning into ashes, they decide to pick up her burnt body and take her with them. And so they take the can, you know, back to their apartment. And the following day, Iman, he, I guess, guilt set in. So he tells his coworker what had happened and the coworker tells him to call law enforcement. Like, dude, that is your daughter, your biological daughter, not Tiffany's, your biological daughter. And so when he went back to the apartment around like 4 a.m., Tiffany and the kids were gone. So that's when he finally called the police because he had stalled on doing so. And he told the police that hurried up and made something up that Tiffany, not Tiffany, but Imani had, you know, died from poison. She had drank something. But when police learned more about what had taken, you know, place, they realized that that wasn't the truth and they arrested Iman. And then soon after, Tiffany dropped her kids at her mother's house and she turned herself in. So this is where the trial and sentencing begin. So Iman testifies against Tiffany and you know he pretty much describes the story of how he was never really home he was working two jobs and he didn't know that tiffany was abusing his daughter but he did have you know a part in trying to cover it up because tiffany was his wife he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole yeah, she was in bed asleep. Hey, mom, did you take her to the doctor then i did not take her to the doctor sir why not uh, I really can't explain it. I, I was trying uh, I was trying to fix something. Like I said, you know, I'm not God, but I'm trying to fix something irre irre irreversible or beyond repair. And then on the other hand, uh, Tiffany, she was just thinking that God was going to save her. And I don't know why she thought that because we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you doing this to Imani. So she did not take a plea deal. She decided she was gonna handle this on her own. And what's so sad is when the all, like the person who the medical examiner did his part in the trial, he told how Imani was literally only 32 pounds and she was skin and bones y'all. Like these, people are evil, evil. So on April 29th of 2019, Tiffany was <laughs> found guilty 
and she was sentenced to death by lethal injections and she is currently on death row awaiting for that very moment as she rightfully should that jury did their job omg she deserves it you know when it comes to children it's just something in my heart i just can't have no remorse for you i don't feel like you need to sit in prison with life no you don't you need to die you need to die it's sad but you need to die and so because of this case a lot of people went to the streets and rec recommended that those people from the child services or whoever needed to be they needed to be fired because Imani would still be here if they would have done their job but I mean look at the little boy story that was on Netflix I forgot his name look at his story and how child services failed him time after time after time and he was being abused by his mother and her boyfriend these are cases that are consistently being repeated and you know what's so messed up about it is you have people who are great parents who ultimately get the short end of the stick like people who lie and call child services and their children to get taken away from them but then they don't ever go after the bad parents i don't i don't get it i don't understand it and can never understand it that is the story of 10 year old imani moss although she didn't get to live to be an adult or a teenager her life impacted so many people and her story should be shared because we have to do better when it comes to these laws and who we put in these positions because there is no way that Imani is still not here because she had people fighting for her and the system is just so flaky that you just never know what you're going to get. But that is her story and I just pray that people just uh, like if you don't want to be with someone who has kids and you want to you want to marry them cool but you don't have to harm their children and as the father I know he has to live with that guilt for the rest of his life because you allowed this woman to tear your family apart because she didn't like your child horrible until the next episode guys I'll see you